Hey guys, what's going on? Paul here. Welcome back to another Cardano video. So today the Sunday Swap Dex has gone live on the testnet. Now it's not gone live on mainnet yet. You can't buy Sunday Swap tokens, but what you can do is go in and test out the Dex, see how it works. And for me, this is a really good milestone to get to because they had a lot of volume going through today. No signs of concurrency issues or anything like that, which we've heard of in the past that Cardano won't be able to run things like that. The network does need to bring them scalability solutions on fairly quickly. But for now, anyway, I'm able to show you the decks, show you what it looks like. And anything I do miss, let me know down below because look, this is on testnet. There are going to be bugs. So if anything isn't right for you, let me know below and I'll do an updated video later in the week as well to see how things are playing out at that stage. Hopefully then we might get a better picture as well on when we might see mainnet which will also bring the ISO as well. I get a lot of questions on that. The ISO will happen when it goes live on mainnet. And yes, both of my pools will be involved in that because the community voted me in as a scooper, which I am very grateful for. So look, let's get into it. Do share it out there if you think others can benefit. Give the video a like as well. And as I said, leave your questions down below. So let's get into it. So this is what you see when you come on to the DEX first. Currently, NAMI is the only DApp enabled wallet that you can use. So NAMI is over here and you can see I already have it installed. It's NAMI, NAMIwallet.io. You can see it up here. I have the wallet already installed. So what you do is now Uroi has a version of this built already. It's not public. We have seen a video from SundaySwap showing how they used it they use a private version of it within their own testing i know cc vault are working on a solution as well so i'd say there'll be lots of different solutions out there over the next few weeks as well as there are i'll create other tutorials as well look these wallets will work with all of the different d apps for me this is a great step because this is getting closer and closer to more and more d apps more and more dexes money markets everything like that launching on top of cardano so when you come in here, click on, you can go into beta guide actually. This shows you exactly what you need to do. So it's detected that I already have the NAMI wallet. So I click on, I can click connect your wallet here or I could have done it out here. So I click connect your wallet. By connecting your wallet, you acknowledge it's a public beta. That's fine, it's on testnet. When I click NAMI, actually back there as well where I clicked NAMI, if there was other options, you would have seen them there as well, like your OI or CC Vault or whatever else as well. So you get this pop-up from NAMI, click access. This just means they can connect. The DEX can read the balances in the wallet as well. So you can see it's connected here now. Now the next step here is to fund your wallet. So if you click on fund your wallet, you can see the ice cream faucet. So I want all of these funds and it's gonna send me test data and send me these other assets as well that I can use for testing. So click on fund wallet. That will go off then depending on how many other people are looking for it at the time. It could take anything from a few minutes, maybe even longer, maybe up to 10, 15 minutes or whatever. I'm not gonna wait on this because I don't know how long it will be just for getting the funds sent back to me. So I'll close that. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to change my wallet. So I'll go back to another wallet that I have here. So if I go into, this one here actually is one I was using earlier on today. So you can see the different assets. You can see the liquidity tokens as well, where I have put up liquidity and pools. I'll show you that in a second. So if I just make sure it's connecting to the right wallet now, I'll refresh. So you can see it's picked up VU. And if I go into portfolio, I can see it has picked up the right one. These are all the tokens in that wallet. These here are the liquidity positions that I have. So this is where I've put up tokens into a liquidity pool to help with the trading. So next, I want to do a basic swap. So when you look on the homepage here, it can be a little bit confusing. I'd say there's a lot of different pools here that you could go into. The simplest way if you want to do a straightforward swap is go into swap. Then you have what we've seen with a lot of different exchanges before, the basic interface to select the token you want to swap from. So I'll say ADA. And with the ADA, I want to buy, let's say, a Husky. So I'll put up 10 ADA. And 
I can see that's given me a lot. So I'll put up two ADA to bring the slippage down because as you've seen there, the slippage, if I put in 20, you can see the slippage on the price impact would be 16.66%. That means there's not much liquidity in this trading pair and my simple trade here would impact that price by 16%. So under the cog here, if you have your slippage tolerance set to something like half a percent or 1%, which I would normally have when I'm trading on another exchange that's live on mainnet, then the trade would actually fail because it means that the slippage is too big and it would go too far outside your price. So for this one, I've set 10% because I don't really care what kind of prices I get. This here is just for testing. But once you're on mainnet, just take a look at your slippage tolerance. So we'd say that even falls outside my 10%. So if I go with 10 ADA, it will give me 9 mil, what's that? 9, 9 million Hosky at that stage and it's a 9% slippage. So I click on swap. It then shows me all the details of what it's going to be, the price, the actual fees in it. Now some of these fees are hard coded in, so these may change or not they may, they probably will change before it goes live as they're refined throughout testing. So you have the ADA fee, the scooper fee, liquidity provider, the deposit then, this is something that comes back to you. So you pay the two ADA, but you get it back. It's to do with the minimum ADA that needs to be in a transaction when you're sending native assets. So once you've done all that, you click on this here, use, it says here, hold to swap. The first time I done it, I didn't read it. I just clicked it, came up, ouch, but you have to click and hold and then it goes to release. And that means that the transaction is now sent. So it's building the transaction here and I've got the pop-up on my other screen. So you can see here the NAMI transaction, it automatically popped up. This is what I'm going to be sending. So I click sign on this. I have to put in the wallet password then. Click on confirm. And then transaction is waiting. So I could sit here and wait like this. I can see pending up here as well, or I can close. So you can see how quick actually that went through. You could click here to see it on Cardano scan, but actually there's a small bug there. It takes you to the mainnet Cardano scan and not the testnet. So what I'll do is I'll close this and I will actually go in here. Actually, which wallet am I using? I'll just get the address of this wallet to show you that on the blockchain. So if I go over here to the testnet, put this wallet in so you can see Cardano scan, you can check any transactions on the network. If I scroll down then, I can see, it's not that one, I'll refresh. It hasn't hit just yet, it will hit in a minute here. So actually while we're waiting just for that to hit, I'll just show you here, if I go back into transactions, I can see submitted, I can see pending here. So I'm swapping 10 ADA for Hosky, and then failed, I don't have any failed on this wallet. So if I come back up here, it should be in there now. So I can see there the transaction that has just gone through a minute ago. You can see the 14.5 ADA, which we sent. Now it hasn't come back to me yet. And the reason for that is because right now, what happens when, when I send the transaction here, go back into transactions, I can see this in pending. So I could cancel this if I want. What has happened is I've sent that transaction into the smart contract. It is recorded on the blockchain. And what happens on the other end is the scoopers pick that up process the transaction and send me back the Hosky plus whatever ADA is left over then as well. So at the minute, the scooper is turned off as I'm recording this. So that means that the transaction won't be completed until they turn it back on. So it says here, they notice if for people who've noticed transactions that are stuck in the queue, scooper is currently offline while they make some improvements to it. Once that goes back online, then the transaction will be completed and they will send me my Hosky then. So on the scooper, there will be 30 scoopers involved in this. I will be one of them when it goes on to mainnet. Throughout testnet, we will be brought in bit by bit as they do testing, as they do improvements. For today, for when it went live first, they ran one scooper themselves. That's why there was a buildup of transactions. But once we get on to mainnet, you will see it will be a lot quicker because there will be more scoopers involved. Once they have it stable, everything working properly, that's when they'll start to onboard us at that stage. So that's it for a swap. For liquidity then, if you want to provide liquidity to a pool, what you can do is come in here, you can pick any of the pools that you want. So you could come in here, you could add liquidity into this pool if this is the one you want to do. 
you can see under positions up here, you can see these are the positions I added in earlier on. So this is where I added liquidity to these pools. You can actually create a pool yourself here. So if you have a token you want to list, you can come in, create the asset pair that you want. So put up some ADA against the token that you have. If I click into it here, create the pool. So I could create the pool with ADA. So it would pick up whatever's in my wallet. So I could create the pool for ADA. And then if I had another token, I could put it in there as well. I have these ones here, but I'm not gonna create this pool. You come in then, you put in whatever, whatever ratio you want. So if I put in 100 ADA and 100 mint, that means that I'm setting the price on this as one ADA per one mint. And then it will fluctuate depending on how the market reacts with that. So again, I'll get into all of that type of stuff again, into creating the pools, liquidity, everything like that. For now, swaps are working as well, working to a degree where it hasn't sent me back the tokens yet. By the time you guys get in to test it, the scooper that they have might be turned back on at that stage. I will show the full process later in the week as well. In summary, for me, I'm very happy to see Cardano at this stage, to see a DEX working on the test net like this, to see or to not see concurrency issues there is a great step as well. We do need to get them scalability solutions running fairly quickly because when apps like this start to run, SundaySwap will be probably one of the first. There's going to be lots more out there. So the number of transactions is going to increase fairly quickly at that stage. Very positive so far. Let me know your own thoughts down below. Again, if you're new, do hit that subscribe. Share this out there if you think others can benefit and give the video a like if you got some value. Thanks for watching guys and I will talk to you soon.